Now we'll go through how to use Sakai for this course. The first thing you want to do is log into the Sakai website. You can go to the Durham Tech website, which is durhamtech.edu, and then go over here to Quick Links. Sakai is the first option. Click on it. You can also log in direct sakai.durhamtech.edu. Enter your user ID and password here. Now, it's very important, if you can't access the Sakai site, let me know what user ID you're trying to use. Every so often, a student will have multiple accounts and be trying to access Sakai via one, when in reality, you should be trying to access it via another. It's a quick way to determine that you might be having a problem. Now, select the name of the course, Journalism 217 right up here. Now in case you can't find it right away, you can go here to sites and it'll show you which ones are the ones you're currently enrolled in. Feel free to put a star next to it so it will show up here as a favorite. Now I also want to point out this help function. Now I do have some Sakai knowledge but I'm by no means an expert. So if you have a question, you might want to first click on student help. It'll take you to a lot of video tutorials to give you Sakai help for students, such as how do you log in, reset your password, etc. Post in a forum, take a quiz and test, submit papers, etc. Again, a lot of very helpful information on using Sakai that you can find right here when you first log in, student help. So now we'll go to our course, Journalism 17. There's a lot of great information that you can find in the Sakai site. The first is, of course, my name and email. I will do my very, very best to check email at least once a day. Now, that might mean I check email Monday morning at 7 a.m. and then again Tuesday night at 7 p.m. So it might be between 24 and 48 hours before you get a response. But again, I'll do my very best to check it as frequently as I can. If there are any periods of time that for a day or two that I will not be available via email, I will let you know in advance. And that brings us to this announcements feature. This is where I would announce something like that, as well as information about Durham Tech happenings, journalism events in the area, and information about when certain things might be graded or announcements about assignments that are coming up. Now, a few announcements I will send out via email as well. Now, many of these you can opt out of if you so choose. The first thing over on this side is the syllabus. If you click over here, you'll find a PDF of the syllabus which gives you all of the information that you need to succeed in the class. In our previous lecture, we talked a little bit about some of the high points of the syllabus, but you're welcome to, of course, look through it as well. It gives you a description of the course, again, the course materials right here. Remember that Grammarly add-in from Microsoft Office is free and you should want it because it will help improve your papers. There's your academic honesty policy, other policies, code of conduct, your grading policy, and various other things. And of course, the course schedule, which includes all of the course due dates. Moving away from the syllabus, you'll find the announcements. So any announcements you might have missed will be here. Now we'll go to the lessons. This is where you'll spend the bulk of your time in Sakai. Now, each week's lesson will post Friday morning at 7 a.m. So for right now, you only see week one. So you want to click on the week one header. And it'll take you to that week. You have a graphic as well as the topic of that week's lecture. And it'll start with the due date. Again, every assignment is due on Thursday at 11.55 p.m. Follow that you will will be there sometimes. I will have some recommended readings. That's things that if you want a little bit more information, you are 
welcome to read, but they are no, be, no means required. Next is your lecture videos. We use something called Edpuzzle to allow for a little more interactivity than a basic video. Now you're going to need to create an Edpuzzle account in order to view those videos and enter the class code. Now each class code is unique, so make sure you're entering what is written down in your particular um, semester. Now the Edpuzzle assignments will be embedded and this is what you will see if you are logged in and you can act if you're logged into Edpuzzle. You can in fact start an assignment right from here. Now we'll tell you a lot more about Edpuzzle in a few minutes. Now it looks like there is a lot of videos but you'll also notice the duration is quite short. Each individual section is its own video. So some of them are about four minutes, some of them are about two minutes. They might at first seem overwhelming, but when you look a little closer and see that your videos are only a minute and 20 seconds, then it'll be a lot easier to take. After the lessons, you will see your assignment for the week. So here's our first assignment, the introduction forum, which is just like in a seated class where you go around and talk about yourself, who you are, what you call yourself, your pronouns, your hometown, how long have you been at Durham Tech, etc. And then you click on the introduction forum in order, to, in order to make your post. Here is the forum. As I said, the introduction forum is your first assignment. There's also a general discussion and questions forum where if you have a question, you're welcome to just email me individually. But if you think some of your peers might have the same question and benefit from the answer, you can post it here. Next is your assignments. This is where you can find individual assignments. There's currently no assignments because none have been assigned yet. You also have tests and quizzes. Again, these will also be linked to from the lessons. Next, you have the resources folder. This is where you can find some good information, such as the 2006 AP style book that I mentioned in the previous lecture. Now, again, it is not new, it's rather old, but I was able to find it online and it's free. So if you aren't able to pick up the newest version or a sort of newer version of the AP style book, you can in fact use the 2016 version of the AP style book here. Now, any distinct changes that have been made, I will try to let you know. So if you're using the 2006 version instead of the most current version, I'll let you know if the changes have been made so you can get the right answer. There's also a few other things like an AP style basics, grammar and punctuation handout, and also this editing marks handout. These are marks that I will use to mark up your paper. So you'll probably want to print this out and have it handy when you review your paper. So if you see something like this, you'll know that I'm asking you to insert an apostrophe. We also have the first chapter of the Hicks textbook, just in case that you weren't able to pick it up at the bookstore quite yet, so you won't get behind. Next, you'll see you have all of your information, your Sakai quizzes, your, home, your AP style quizzes, Sakai homework, and writing assignments. All that information will be here. You'll see that we also have an unassigned a AP style quiz. That'll be assigned to AP style. You'll also have a calendar where you can find due dates for certain events once they are assigned. Like for instance, here you'll notice that your AP style quiz number one is due. If you need to send me an email, you can also do so from Sakai and there's an email archive. And of course, if you have any need help or anything, you can click here and it'll give you more information from Sakai. So that is how to navigate Sakai. Next, we'll move on to Edpuzzle. Now we'll learn a little bit about using Edpuzzle, which is where you can find your lecture videos. Now, as long as you're logged into Edpuzzle, you can watch the videos directly from the Sakai site, or you can go to edpuzzle.com and watch them there. 
Now the first thing you'll want to do is go here to sign up. Cl select I'm a student and put in your first name, last name, and a username and password. You do not even have to put in an email if you choose not to. Now in the next screen, which I won't show you because I've already made my account, what you'll do is you'll put in each unique name for the class. Now this unique code is listed on each lessons page in Sakai. So that's how you'll be invited to this class. Then you'll log in. If you have multiple classes, you'll need to scroll down and find it, the Journalism 217. And here you will see under Do Soon, this week's videos. Now, each of these is also embedded into your Sakai site, but again, you can watch them there or you can watch them here. Now, I'll show you the due date as well as the status. This shows you what percentage of each video you have viewed. This here, the question mark, says that there are two questions inserted into this week's video and also that you have scored zero out of 100 for those particular questions, which of course you scored a zero because you haven't answered them yet. Now down here, you'll see the using Sakai and Edpuzzle, and you viewed 0% and there are no questions inserted. You won't always have questions inserted into a lecture. Now these two I have completed the journalism 101 and why writing is important and you can see progress to check your assignment progress you can see again that I have viewed as a student 100% and I don't have any correct responses but I don't have any submitted responses for there weren't any questions in that particular video now speaking of this journalism 101 lecture if you I will be able to see the video again. Now, once you view the video, you can fast forward, which I will do here. See, it's a short video, so it's easy to fast forward. And each week starts with a view, which tells you what items will be covered in each week's lesson. This one has why writing is important, academic versus journalistic writing, types of print journalism, and tips for print journalists. Now, I also have some sources that use for my lectures. Now, rather than have them at the end where they might get lost, I'm actually going to insert them at the end of each preview lesson. So if you want more information later about what I talk about from Marquette University and why writing is so important, you can refer back to the preview slide and that will give you the information on how to get it. So now we'll go back to the next video lecture, which is why writing is important. Now we can also click our, check our progress here or we can review. And this one is a little bit longer but you can see that there is a question inserted here. Now, because I've already viewed it, I can fast forward through it. And take me right to that particular question. Now, once the question comes up, you'll see it over here on this side of the screen. Now, sometimes it'll also be printed out on the screen itself. Sometimes it won't. Um, We'll just have to see which one it is. But either way, it will be on the left side of the screen. Now, you'll have, sometimes there'll be true, false, or multiple choice, or there might be a um, open-ended question. Either way, you'll be able to have the information here. And there we go. Here's the question. Writing is the primary basis upon which your work, your learning and your intellect will be judged in college, in workplace, and in the community. And it's a true or false question. Unfortunately, I selected the wrong answer, which is false. And I'm not able to select the answer again. Now, you don't need to get every single question right in the lecture, but it is important that you watch them so that you can understand what's going on and get a better understanding of journalism. And then you hit continue and it will out the video. See, and here's the question come up here. 
Again, it's a true or false question. Spoiler alert, the answer is true, so you can get that question right. Now we'll scroll down a little bit more to see all of the videos for this particular week. You'll see like these two at the bottom, they don't have any quiz questions inserted, but you'll still want to watch them. And these two do have two quiz questions each. Now I also want to show you the upcoming where you can see the lectures that are planned for upcoming weeks. Again, there is five lectures, but don't freak out, many of them are very short. And that is a little bit about how to use Edpuzzle.